Hello, and welcome to this session as part of the College Planning Night at Glenmore East High School. This session is going to be regarding the State Colleges of Illinois. My name is Scott Lilly. I have the pleasure of serving as one of our counselors here at Glenmore East, and we want to take a moment to share this information with you uh, to help our families understand what options are available as public schools in the state of Illinois, how they compare to one another, and then we're going to also share some other options in the surrounding states that might be also be affordable options for our families, because we know that one of the driving forces of why we're looking at public schools in the state of Illinois is for that proximity to home, as well as that affordability measure. So hopefully we can give you some ideas through this presentation uh, on the state schools of Illinois. So first of all, a little background about who I am and where this information comes from. Uh, this is my 16th year as a school counselor, uh, a field of which I got into really because of my excitement and interest in the college admissions process. Um, and therefore, I've spent the last 16 years trying to visit and learn about as many colleges as possible. At this point, I've toured almost 150 different colleges and universities, some of them more than once. And I do that primarily through the Illinois Association of College Admissions Counseling, of which I serve on their board. Um, and it allows us to get counselors out and view different schools so that we can get that information and bring it back to our students and our families. I also like to share that I have degrees from both the University of Illinois and Urbana-Champaign and Northern Illinois University. So hopefully I'm not too biased in my presentation here about the degrees that I've received. So my background is all at public schools in Illinois. And that's why we're doing this presentation here today because we know that many other of our families are looking for a public option in Illinois. So uh, Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this presentation as part of the College Planning Night series for our parents and students. My name is Scott Lilly. I'm one of the counselors here at Glenbard East High School. And tonight we're going to be talking about the State Colleges of Illinois. We know that a lot of families are looking for not only affordable options, but also options that are close to home. And so the best place to start is with our state public institutions. Thanks for joining us. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I always like to do is to share a little bit of my background. Uh, I have been a counselor at, for... First thing I always like to do is share a little bit of my background. Uh, I've been a counselor for 16 years now. I got into the field specifically to help students with that college application process. So I've been very passionate about this from the very beginnings of my career. Uh, each summer, I joined the Illinois Association of College Admissions Counseling, and we go out, we tour as many colleges and universities as we can, so that we can come back and help our families and students understand the options that exist for them. At this point, I've toured almost 150 different college and universities, many of them multiple times, just so, like I said, we can come back and share that information with you. Also, I always want to share that I do have degrees from both the University of Illinois and from Northern Illinois University. And I will try and limit my biases about those two institutions as we talk here. Uh, and so I apologize in advance if that comes out at any point. I also do like to share that um, I'm hoping this information is useful for you to hopefully get you started. But as I like to say, trust me, but don't believe me. I really want to encourage you to get out there and see these options for yourself. So hopefully you hear something tonight that's a springboard for you to encourage you to go out and check these out firsthand. So let's take a look at the schools that we're talking about. So let's take a look at some of the ideas we're gonna talk about and why we have this presentation here this evening. First off, this is data from the past five years of where our students at Glenbard East have selected to apply. As you can see in the top 20 schools, So first off, let's take a look at why we do this presentation. You can see here is a list of where our students from Glenbard East have chosen to apply over the past five years. On the screen there is the top 20 destinations students have applied to, and four of the top five are state public universities in Illinois. 
Also on the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there are three more that land within the top 50. So we know that our families are looking for these uh, options for their students. And so that's why we felt it important to share this with you up front to help guide future families in looking into some of the same options. So what are they? Here are the first six of the 12 institutions. So there are 12 total public universities in Illinois. Uh, you'll see them listed here again, the first six of 12, just listed in alphabetical order. Notice you see the abbreviations on the far right. Please pay attention to those because as we go through the next few slides, we'll be comparing these schools side to side and that's what we're gonna use to designate them on each of the graphs. So there's the first six that you'll see. And then the other six are here. You'll notice some of them have very similar names. So we do actually have two Southern Illinois universities. They're completely separate institutions. One is located in Carbondale and one in Edwardsville. And then three completely separate institutions of the University of Illinois, one in Chicago, Springfield, and then also Urbana-Champaign. Um, I also like to point out on the bottom of the screen, because this can often be confusing, you'll notice that all of our state universities have the name Illinois in them, and many of them have directions in them as well. Just because a school has the word Illinois or a direction in it does not make it a public university. So most commonly, uh, we see those schools in the bottom, they're often being lumped into this group that they're not actually public schools. So Northwestern, North Central College, Illinois College and the University of Chicago, they all sound like they would be public schools in Illinois, but they are actually not. They are private schools. Here's a picture of the state of Illinois, so you can kind of get an idea of geographically where they are all located. As you can see, there's a high concentration of schools in the northeastern portion of the state, which makes sense because that's where we have the highest uh, concentration of people. So the state has done a good job of trying to get schools out there uh, so that everybody in the state can get access to them locally. Um, and at Glenbard East, you can see I put us up there too, so you can see what are the closest schools in proximity. You'd be looking at Northern Illinois University, just a little bit west of us, or going into the city for one of those four options. But this kind of gives you an idea of where these different schools are located across the state. Now let's take a look at a comparison of some of the factors that kind of matter in this process of, of choosing these schools. So um, this is the, size, the total enrollment of each of the 12 schools in Illinois, you'll see they vary in size. The University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign comes in at number one with just over 50,000 students attending there at one time. Um, it's, and I also concluded a breakdown of the undergraduate population versus the other populations. Um, just to bring you up a terminology, when you graduate high school and begin college, you're considered an undergraduate. And then once you complete your first four-year degree, you would move on to potentially graduate school or uh, doctoral um, program if, if you wanted to. So this shows you the breakdown of the student populations. Again, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, number one. UIC located in the city is number two. Um, be aware though that there are a lot of students that attend UIC. They're not traditional full-time students that have left home and are living on campus. Many students at UIC um, are living at home um, and they're balancing both work and school at the same time, maybe are not full-time students. Um, after that, Illinois State University is the second largest of the traditional campuses uh, in the state of Illinois, located in Bloomington Normal, Northern Illinois University, then in DeKalb. And then we really start to level off uh, at schools hovering at the 10,000 and lower range, all the way down to Chicago State, Western Illinois being uh, very small campuses. Western Illinois University, you might see a list as having about 7,000 students enrolled. However, those students are spread over multiple campuses in multiple areas of the state. The Macomb campus, which is the primary campus of Western Illinois University, uh, is really more down around two to 3,000 students each year. So uh, what's the difference of these different schools? Well, we usually start with the average GPA and what it takes to get in. You can see here's kind of a breakdown. Um, notice that this is on a 4.0 GPA scale. Currently, Lombard uses a 5.0 GPA scale. So if you're looking at where you land on this chart, actually, all you have to do, you don't have to do complicated math. You just simply needed to subtract one point. So look at what your current cumulative GPA is, subtract one point, and now you'll be on the 4.0 scale. Um, so you can see that the uh, highest average GPA is at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. I will caution you though, there's great variability at that school. The University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign is comprised of a number of colleges, um, such as the College of Education, the College of Fine and Applied Arts, and so on. They all have different GPA requirements. This is an average for the whole university. So you may hear of students having maybe even a lower number than this 
uh, being admitted. That might depend on what major they apply to, or you might hear of a student who has a much higher GPA that didn't get admitted, and that might be because they applied to one of the more challenging majors, such as computer science, business, or engineering. So again, University of Illinois and Urbana-Champaign being the most uh, the highest GPA, you're looking at Illinois State University being a, above a 3.5, and then everything else about a 3.5 or lower um, is going to be within the average range there with uh, Governor State University and Northeastern Illinois University being the lowest. Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville did not report theirs uh, in the field in which I, I pulled this information from. So uh, just roughly speaking, uh, we're looking at somewhere in the 3.0 to 3.5 range um, is a good GPA for you if you're looking at, look at your public school options. In addition, here are the SAT scores. Again, many of the schools have not reported this. If you're following uh, the latest trends right now, a lot of schools have gone to a test optional policy in order to manage uh, the COVID pandemic where students were not able to gain access to an SAT and therefore they've withheld the average scores that they put out there just because um, it really is deceptive to kind of share that information. But again, this allows us to compare some of these schools side to side. Uh, University of Illinois, again, you're seeing just under 1400 there. But I want to remind you that it's variable based on what major you apply to. Some majors um, require much higher than, than others. Uh, after that, you, should, you see UIC and Illinois State University being the next highest for uh, SATs. And then again, all the other schools, you come in around that 1,000 mark or lower uh, in terms of admissibility there. So it gives you kind of a general idea what they're looking for. Um, and the, the ones that are not reported here, again, they didn't provide at the time, but I would tell you um, the average SAT admit score is uh, a little bit lower than the ones you see on the screen. Excuse me. Okay, the next thing we want to compare, which is really what brings a lot of people to look to uh, the state colleges in Illinois, is how much does it cost to go to each of these different schools? Um, and again, you'll see the two, I, I think you probably expected to come in first, are going to come in first here as well. The University of uh, Illinois at Urbana-Champaign is going to be your most expensive option, uh, largely because it carries with it a big name. It's a national institution. So students from around the country will try to come to Illinois um, to go to that particular school. Um, therefore, they can have a little bit higher price. Um, UIC, also a national institution as well, uh, but also pulling a lot from the Chicago land. Plus, you have the expense of Chicago is what you see in the UIC graph. So um, if, when you look at those two schools, you're looking at a, a cost, again, a starting cost at about $37,000 a year. Again, that's the sticker price. That's before any kind of financial aid or any kind of scholarship stuff would kick in, but that is their initial price. Compared to what you see from the rest of the state, most of them are coming in in the range between $20,000 to $25,000 a year. Um, and so if you're looking for what your estimate is there, um, that kind of gives you an idea that you're paying a little bit more, but really that's kind of an average for in the state of Illinois. So uh, keep this in mind as we look to some of the other things at the end of this presentation, that in the state of Illinois, if you're looking at our public schools, you're looking at somewhere in the range of twenty dollars to $25,000 most likely for uh, total cost of attendance. When we talk about the cost for college, we also want to talk about some of the other steps that can kind of save you on that cost. And one of the things you want to keep in mind when we talk about the cost of college, do we want to? So I want to remind you one of the reasons that we're looking at this presentation today is we know that a lot of families are thinking about the cost of college. And I want to remind you about At the start of this presentation, we talked about the reason that a lot of families look at the state schools in Illinois is they're looking for a cost saving measure. So I want to bring up this point to remind you of one of the other things that can help to save you in the overall cost of college, and that's our state AP policy. If you're not aware, back in 2015, Governor Rauner at the time signed into law that all public universities must grant credit 
for an AP score of a three or higher. So therefore, if you are taking or have considered taking AP classes, I highly encourage you to go ahead and take the AP exams at the end to try and get a score of at least a three. That's gonna be guaranteed to be uh, accepted at a public university. So again, if you're looking at the cost saving measure, you're looking to our public schools in Illinois, AP courses are guaranteed to get you, or I'm sorry, AP scores of three or higher are guaranteed to get you credit at those institutions. So it's another way that you can save yourself a class or a few classes that overall can save you in the cost of how long it's going to take you to graduate college. So I highly encourage you to look at our AP curriculum offerings, take a few of those classes, and when you take the class, take the exam, because if you get a three or higher, it's going to add up in terms of your savings for college. This one is one of the... Okay, so maybe some of the information I've shared with you already in this presentation has not really sparked you. It's some things that you weren't really interested in. Okay, so maybe you've looked at our list of colleges in the state of Illinois and you're saying, no, nah, I'm still not too interested. What other options do I have to have an affordable option for college? Well, a couple of things I wanted to mention to you. Right now, we're, there are some nice options out there that are a little bit hidden that we've kind of stumbled upon that I want to share with you um, in ways that you can look outside of Illinois, but get comparable prices. And so here's some suggestions I'd like to share with you. First of all, the state of Michigan uh, is seeing a decline in the students choosing in, in their state choosing to go to college. And so therefore they have a number of large public universities that they are looking to fill some seats at. So the University of Michigan and Michigan State University, they're doing just fine. Their, their national names are getting plenty of students there. However, there are other great, great universities in the state of Michigan that are looking to pull students from surrounding states and therefore are offering in-state or close to in-state rates. Places such as Western Michigan University, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Grand Valley State University, Ferris State University, Northern Michigan, Michigan Tech. All great institutions. Take a look at the public schools in Michigan, not named Michigan or Michigan State. You might find a great deal at any one of those. In addition, as we name our schools in Illinois with various directions, the, uh, with the state of Wisconsin names all of their public universities, the University of Wisconsin at, and then whatever city they're located in. So the one that most of us are aware of is the one that's located in Madison, uh, but there are other schools in Milwaukee, Stout, Eau Claire, Whitewater, Platteville, Parkside, and other places on top of that. Most of them are also offering rates that are going to rival, if not beat, Illinois public school rates. So take a good look in, in Wisconsin. And actually, uh, like I said, Madison is going to be expensive. Milwaukee will actually work with you a little bit too. So maybe it's not fair for them to be on this slide as being a place that won't give you an offer. They will give you some kind of an offer. Uh, but again, it's going to be a little bit more expensive because it's in a major city. So take a look at, again, the public schools in Wisconsin, uh, not located in Madison. Uh, Missouri State and Truman State are two great institutions in the state of Missouri. We're going to talk about that as well in just a moment. Um, also, if you look down in, in Kentucky, you'll find the Western Kentucky University. Most people have never heard of it, but it's a really, it's a great school. It's about 12,000 students. Uh, great athletic programs give you the same vibe of these schools, but just a smaller name and a much, much smaller price tag. Louisville is really trying to get students from the Chicagoland area, and so they're offering some nice scholarships just because you're from Chicagoland that'll bring it down into a competitive price tag. And just recently, I learned of uh, the options at the University of Akron. They're looking for students there, and I think anywhere in Ohio, so similar to what I've said about uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, take a look in Ohio, um, not Ohio State, obviously, they're going to be bringing in national names, so they're not going to offer a lot of price breaks. Uh, but some of the other places in there, such as Bowling Green, um, are going to offer you opportunities to try and get a more affordable price. Um, what we call those big name schools that get national draws are called flagship public schools. Each state has one or two. Um, so you want to look around at some of the other schools in their state that don't have those big names. They're the ones that are going to be offering those good deals to try and bring in more students. Um, another thing I talk to families about a lot is they always ask about, well, once my student goes to school in a, uh, another state, don't they become a resident and can I get the in-state rate then? Um, the answer is, well, it depends. There's some conditions for it. Um, 
schools like Mizzou and also uh, Utah, they openly advertise this. They encourage you to do it. So if you go on the University of Missouri's website, they will give you the step-by-step -step process of how you become a resident. Basically entails your student living there for a full calendar year, uh, working a certain amount. Um, it also affects your ability to claim them on your taxes. Uh, but overall, it could be well worth it to have them uh, transition the residency officially to that state. So while Missouri does make it easy, Iowa tends to make it kind of difficult. Um, so you got to look closely at those options. And just so you know, too, if you have a cabin located in another state, that doesn't count as residency. It's where you primarily live. So there are some, some legal pieces going to that, but it might be worthwhile looking into if your student is going to go out of state at a public school um, and try and keep that cost down. Um, the other thing I will throw out there too, I know when you're looking at private schools, you see the big, ugly, scary, gaudy price tags on them. Um, that would scare me too, but we would encourage you to at least look into them a little bit first before you walk away from those things. Um, they do have more significant financial aid at private schools. So if you're looking at saving some money, um, private schools can be an option. You just have to go through quite the process with it. What I would encourage any family to do is be, as you start looking at colleges, Go to any school's website and then the little magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner, type in the word net price calculator. Again, the words net price calculator. Every school is required to have one by law on their website. What it allows you to do is today, no matter how old your student is, you can input some information in there right now, and they will give you an estimate of what your financial aid is eventually going to work out as in the end of their senior year. So if you want to look into those options now, get an idea of, is it worth, us to, worth it for us to even research the school at this point? Try the net price calculator and see what that cost comes down for you and your family, and then decide if you want to look further into that school or just walk away from it because you feel like it's never going to get, end up being affordable. Um, so that's what we have for the bulk of this presentation. I want to uh, thank you all for tuning in. If you are viewing this uh, video prior to November 3rd of 2021, I want to invite you to join us for a live Zoom session with myself and some of the other Glenbardy's counselors on Wednesday night, November 3rd, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're happy to take uh, questions that you might have about our College Night video series, so this video or any other ones in this, or any other topics you have related to college or the financial aid process. Again, that's going to be on Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Um, please join us for any questions you might have. Also, uh, I just wanted to thank you for joining us for this video. I hope you found something uh, valuable here. And if you wouldn't mind, we'd love to have you complete our evaluation. Um, we really value your feedback and encourage you to fill out our survey by scanning this QR code with your phone. Um, to give us some feedback for how we can improve this and provide the right information for people in the future. So um, again, my name is Scott Lilly. I'm one of the counselors in the School Counseling Office in Glenbard East. Uh, if you have any particular questions uh, about this video uh, after November 3rd, feel free to drop me an email, give me a call, stop by and see me. I'd love to talk more about this topic or anything else uh, college-wise. Again, thanks for joining us. We hope you found it helpful.